Welcome to the five most amazing moves of Anatoly Karpov, one of my favorite players. His style was said to be that of a bow constrictor, strangling his opponent slowly but surely. But when asked what his style was, Karpov famously said, I've got no style. Quite a class answer, I think. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel now, and we're going to move over to five of his most brilliant moves. Well, in my eyes, Karpov was the most subtly brilliant chess player ever. His speciality was to stop his opponent's intentions. Unlike Tao, who used to throw the kitchen sink at his opponent, Karpov would refrain his opponents from doing what they want to do. And this position here with white to play is a very famous example of that. Karpov now plays a really nice move. What is the move Karpov played and why, more importantly? Well, he now goes bishop to a7. And this move may not seem that sparkling. And that's what makes it that much more attractive to me. Karpov is simply avoiding exchanging pieces on the A file. In the position before that, black clearly wants to exchange rooks, get all the heavy pieces, rooks and queens, off the board, which will ease his problems. A basic rule in chess is if you have more space, you want to avoid exchanges. And this move, bishop a7, just stops black from doing what he wants to do. And we can see after a couple more maneuvers, white already has double power on the a file, and he goes on to outmaneuver his opponent, who really hasn't got many options in this position. A lovely subtle move which I think really encapsulates Karpov's style of chess. Now before Carlsen came along most people considered Karpov the best endgame player of all time. Maybe he still is, who knows. And this is his most famous ending. His opponent Garry Kasparov. These two special Ks had many uh, epic encounter between them. And in this position, Kasparov with the black pieces took on h4. What did Karpov now play? I think 99.999% of any human being would capture this pawn back. The issue now, as you can see in my lovely graphical things there, is that the white king cannot get into the position. And in the ending, the king is very important. It can't come past any of these three squares, which are protected by black's pieces. Now, I know this is quite high level stuff, but Karpov amazingly played knight to g2, giving up a pawn in an ending. A simply astonishing idea. This position helps him because his pawns are on dark squares, meaning that Kasparov's bishop can never attack them. This is a very important thing for the ending. And we see the real point very soon. After pawn takes g3, I'll let you discuss other matters in the chat. King takes g3. Karpov now has a way in for his king. He has no pawn on h4, a weird position where it's better not to have the pawn. And after some maneuvering, Karpov wins his pawn back. And slowly but surely, we can see now the white king has a way in, which it wouldn't have done had he simply captured the pawn back. He goes on to win maybe the most brilliant ending of all time in fantastic style. And just this concept struck me as a young kid and I hope also you guys can appreciate the beauty of it. On to example number three. Well I know in my last video you found the moves of Magnus Carlsen's a little bit too easy. So I'm putting you a challenge here and this position was Karpov against Gata Kamsky, a famous American player. And Gata Kamsky had got quite a dangerous position with the queen pointing down here. Now what should black play? I mean, castling looks incredibly risky. We always want to get our king safe because a bishop takes h6 and the black king gets ripped apart. So what do we do here? Well, Karpov now comes up with an amazing idea. Can you see the idea? And at the time, this was simply unseen. King to e7. There's a fine line between stupidity and genius, madness and genius. And this move sums it up. Is this move moving the king a beginner's move or is it a move of a genius? Well, it's a move of a genius. Karpov wants to go g5. He cannot play g5 in the original position because of the pin on the h-pawn. 
The G pawn can simply be captured. Karpov cannot take that bishop back. But after this wonderfully weird move, now be honest, did you see this move? I mean, not many humans would. So, for example, had Kamsky castled, G5 is actually winning material for black. And a lovely idea. If you take this pawn now, the rook on H8 is simply defended. Brilliant stuff. The game continued with Kamsky trying to play aggressive with knight E5. But now Karpov simply captures that knight and plays. Can you see the move? Queen a5 check. Picking up the pawn on e5, Karpov's won a pawn and he goes on to win the game. But again, a, a move which some of you might think, well, that's not anything special. But for me, brilliantly subtle. Sums up Karpov's amazing, amazing power on the chessboard. Now one of the most amazing tactical sequences of all time. Another rival of Karpov's was Korchnoi, and this is maybe one of the best games of chess I've ever seen. Karpov shows his tactical flair here. He's attacking on the H-file, and he comes up with a series of devastating tactics. Now, I'm going to go through them quite quick, but do pause and just spend a bit of time on the tactics and try to work out what happens. White to play. What does white now do? G5. This is a discombobulating move. Meaning it is a misdirection move. It messes up black's pieces. If the knight moves at all, we have knight to f4. And we're going to force our way to h7. So rook takes g5 was played by Korchnoi. And now comes the second blow. And again, pause if you want to. Rook d5. An amazing move. This rook now has to be captured because the rook and queen have been separated. It can't be captured by the knight because a queen takes h7 and queen takes h8 checkmate. So rook takes d5 is forced and now Karpov's idea, knight takes d5, trying to get rid of the defender of h7, throwing everything at the black king, amazing tactics. Rook to e8, trying to defend e7, and now knight to e4, another piece comes in, bishop c6, and now another stunning move, the third brilliant blow. E5, and another discombobulating move. The actual idea of this is to stop the black queen coming to the king side. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you go for brute force with knight takes f6, there's nothing really here for white. We can take on h7, but the black king escapes, runs away, does a forest gump. Run, forest, run. So we can't do that one. And another idea here would be knight to h5. A, a beautiful idea, threatening multiple checkmates. And also we have rook g1s, but now the queen shows its power. Queen to g5 check. The queens are exchanged and black can hang on. This brilliant move e5 has the point that if pawn takes e5, we do the same combination. Knight takes f6, knight to h5, but there's no queen to g5. Amazing stuff. And after e5, well, Karpov went on to win in very brutal fashion with rook to e1 coming, Korchnoi resigned. Well, this last example was played against English Grandmaster Mestel. And this was a case of combining positional ideas, which Karpov was great at, with tactical ideas. He was also pretty good at them. So what would you play as white here in a position where maybe it doesn't seem that, you know, weird or, you know, tactical? Well, bishop to f3. I have to mention bishop e4 was also interesting, but this move I really like. Quite a rare case of Karpov, which I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen before. Now, the point is that bishop's aiming for g4, so black has to do something. It seems like the bishop is lost, but after a couple of exchanges, Karpov has again, like some of the other examples, distracted black away from some of the squares he wants to defend, mainly g6 and now with queen g6 check coming in karpov goes on to obliterate the black king side and all the protection around it by swapping off all the pawns and we can see after numerous checks he has three pawns for the piece but the black king is now so weak and of course mestel cannot defend this in the long run e6 is coming when the bishop also joins in and a lovely example from Karpov there of a weird move that tactically works. 
beautiful examples there. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel. I really do hope you've enjoyed this series. Leave your comments below. Did you like those examples or did you prefer the Carlson videos? You guys choose. I want to hear some discussion and also which of those examples was your favorite. And I'll bring you more videos very soon. Have a little look at these videos.